If you are a fan of the 48 car, past or present, you are having a good day today because Jimmy Johnson is officially in the Daytona 500 and Alex Bowman has won his third Daytona 500 poll and has set the record for most consecutive front row starts in the Daytona 500 with six straight front row starts in the Daytona 500. I don't know what they put in Alex Bowman's cereal or what they put in Alex Bowman's car's cereal the morning of Daytona 500 qualifying, but whatever it is, they need to keep doing that because this is insane. Six straight Daytona 500s that he's been on the front row. Now, we know that Hendrick Motorsports always shows up for Daytona 500 qualifying. They haven't won a 500 since 2014, but still, qualifying, they always shine. They sweep the front row one year that I think they even won two, three, four. Like, they are insane in Daytona 500 qualifying. They absolutely blow everyone out in qualifying. This year wasn't as clean as a blowout. They still got a one, two, three, but you know, the forts were pretty fast today. Point being, for some reason, they are always on it for Daytona 500 qualifying. I don't know why that is. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. And it was expected again. And early on, it looked a little bit like it was going to be challenged. But then at the end, Larson was first for by a good bit. And then Bowman beat him by a good bit. And it was the same thing with round two. Uh, Byron was on pole most of the second round of qualifying. Then Larson, he got it. And then Bowman eventually got the pole. But yes, as I said, a Hendrick Motorsports 1, 2, 3. Bowman is on pole. Larson is alongside him on the front row. So they both get their little trophies, of course. The Daytona 500 qualifying being one of the most important qualifying sessions of the year. No, at the end of the day, the qualifying doesn't mean much. It's not like F1 where you start first, you have the highest percent chance of winning, especially at Daytona. Daytona, there could be a big crash, you can finish last. You know, a guy who starts 35th could win. It's, it's just how Daytona races. The super speedway races, it's what they are. But it is still a big accomplishment. It's a bigger deal, I think, for the guys who actually build the cars because really it's just about the takeoff pit road and then you're essentially flooring it once you get to fifth gear and uh, holding it on the bottom. So I think it's more of a testament to the work on the actual cars, the engines, the aerodynamics. Um, like, don't get me wrong, there is still some driver skill needed there, obviously, uh, to get through the gears at the right time, to get that launch off pit road, to get to the right part of the track at the right time, but still, I think it's more of the mechanical side of things. But for some reason, Alex Bowman, it, he's he's in Hendrick Motorsports, which is one of the top teams in NASCAR. But out of his four teammates, he always figures out how to get it done. So yeah, Alex Bowman is your pole sitter, as I said. Uh, Kyle Larson second, William Byron third, so Hendrick Motorsports one, two, three. I'll read you off the top 10 here. Almirola fourth, Logano fifth, Briscoe sixth, Ryan Blaney 7th, Austin Sindrick 8th, Harrison Burton 9th, and Kyle Busch 10th. Kyle Busch, he had an interesting, um, I guess we can call it a tactic. He went below the double yellow line to try to pick up the draft off of Sindrick, who was going on his cool down lap. It's a smart idea, yeah. But just like the race, you can't pass the double yellow line, so they said, bye Kyle Busch, you're going to the back. And since it was the second round of qualifying, the back is 10th. But yes, as I said at the very beginning of this video, Jimmy Johnson is in the Daytona 500 and also Travis Pastrana. Jimmy Johnson coming out of retirement, well, full-time retirement. He's been racing part-time in IndyCar. Uh, but Jimmy Johnson coming back to the NASCAR Cup Series with the Legacy Motor Club, uh, formerly known as Petty GMS. And Jimmy Johnson will be part-time this year. Uh, he's running at least the Daytona 500 in Chicago Street Course. He has yet to determine what those other races will be. But for the Daytona 500... He was an open car. 36 spots are locked in to the Daytona 500 based on the charter, which leaves four spots available for open cars. Those open cars are, as I said, Jimmy Johnson and Travis Pastrana. The other ones are Chandler Smith in a third colleague car, um, Zane Smith in a third, co uh, not colleague, a third front row car, uh, Austin Hill is driving the Beard Motorsports car, Connor Daly in the Money Team car. Yeah, those are your open cars so as i said jimmy johnson travis pastrana they both qualified in on time two cars make it in on time two cars whoever finishes in the top of the duel uh it does get a little bit confusing though because if johnson or pastrana finish at the top of their duel then it would be the next fastest guy in their duel 
So it says here, Zane Smith, if he's the top open car in his duel, or if Johnson or Pastrana is the top open in their duel, then Austin Hill is in. If he's the top open car in his duel, it's very confusing. It's it, it's very confusing. Uh, but it says here Chandler Smith and Connor Daly must be the top in their duel. They can't rely on um, fastest time to be taken. So they have to finish the highest. Also, uh, yeah, uh, we need practice before qualifying. It doesn't have to be a three-hour practice. We don't need four practice sessions. But Chandler Smith, the very first car to go out on qualifying and his car breaks down. He can't even get off pit road past like 10 miles an hour or something because something broke. Uh, he eventually got it fired up by the time he was in turn one. And then at that point, it broke down again and he had to limp to pit road. If we had a one hour practice session, then even 30 minutes, that would have happened in the practice. They would have found out what the issue is, what the problem was, got it fixed, and he'd be able to qualify normally. I'm not saying Chandler Smith would have been the fastest open car, but it would have been nice to know. Uh, I think he did eventually get a lap in. He obviously was not the fastest uh, open car, but, you know, it still would have been nice. And we also wouldn't have had to sit around for 10 minutes wondering if his car was ever going to start. Connor Daly also had a problem, but he never actually made it on track. He said it was like a one in a million thing or something in the oil filter thing, oil line, something like that exploded and you know, they couldn't run it. It takes too long to fix. So they didn't even get a shot to get a lap in. Um, so that's why he didn't. So he is now in a must finish the highest in his duel or he is out. But uh, yeah, as for Austin Hill, I guess I didn't talk about him. That's the only open car I didn't talk about. Um, well, Zane Smith too, but <clears throat> yeah, that that's it for qualifying. As I said, Hendrick Motorsports domination in the qualifying yet again. Um, but can they turn that into race success? You'll see in my Daytona 500 preview this weekend. Anyways, the duels are tomorrow. We will know the full Daytona 500 field in about, I guess, 24 hours or so. Uh, but thanks for watching this. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you're informed. But Jimmy Johnson in, Travis Pastrana in, and once again, Alex Bowman on the front row in the Daytona 500. Let me, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you guys tomorrow for the duels.